Does hip hop live in the boardrooms of New York City or does it live on the reservations in the United States? Does hip hop live in the White House or does it live in the refugee camps of the world? The despised, the rejected people of the world are speaking and we should listen to them. I think that it's important to also understand that hip hop at its best at its very best, has exposed power. It hasn't served power. And so that's also uh, uh, an issue we have to question now. What's being put out to us as hip hop, what's being rammed down our throats as hip hop, is it challenging power or is it serving power? We have to question when the US government loves the same rappers that you love, <laughs> whose interests, whose interests are those rappers serving? Decode that. <laughs> if, if, if you know what you're referring to, Jay-Z has come out with a book called, what is it, Decode? Decoded. Decoded. So, and he's somebody who's been pictured inside the White House, sitting inside the White House. Now, aside from anybody's personal opinions of an artist or their career, we have to question why it is the person who is being pushed out to the world as the greatest rapper of all time now, of all time, sitting in the White House. Well, we have to actually understand what function the United States has in the world today. When we talk about the United States, we are talking about a country which has an estimated 1,000 military bases worldwide from Colombia, to Diego Garcia, to the Philippines, to Japan, to Italy, to Germany, and even within this country that we are in today. Now, a perfect way of understanding, I am talking, I can only talk for myself when I say this. When I started rapping as a 12 year old boy, I was not rapping in my own voice. I was rapping with an American accent. What would possess a 12 year old boy to rap in an American accent? Why was that? Why did I do that? I did that because of this blind admiration that we are encouraged as young people to have for the empire. Here in London, with young boys running around fighting over bandanas. Where have they learned that from? You know, and I'm not dissing the reality of that in, in Los Angeles, because those of us who know how that came to be understand why that exists. But you've got a generation of young men and women buying into a culture that doesn't even really exist. A fake representation of someone's suffering. Well, whereas if we were all taught and understood hip-hop as African oral tradition, that doesn't mean that other people couldn't and shouldn't participate in it. Just as I've got tons of friends in Harlesden that study an Indonesian martial art called Kiksa or Katea. The, the, the person who teaches it's black, all the people who do it are black. But that doesn't change the fact that it's Indonesian culture. And they travel back to Indonesia once or twice a year to pay reverence to that culture and to understand its roots. And it's the same with hip-hop. Understood in that culture, we can look retrospectively at what's been helpful and what's been damaging. Understood as African oral tradition. Understood as ghetto music. Limited to the confines or to suggest that people's creativity is limited to their suffering is very, very dangerous because then what happens when they're not suffering anymore. But if we can demonstrate we prove before those situations of suffering existed, people were already rapping. People were already making brilliant, beautiful music that we can hear the blues scales in already. We can hear the rhythms for dance or music in already. It changes the scope of what's possible for this culture. Um, and that's really, really important for us to understand and do that research and that history the way we would for another culture. Yes. The thing is, I think England, more so than America in many ways, 
can be an example of the damage of, of misguided cultural ideology. Because absolutely, some of the same institutional practices exist here. Some of the same um, reality of oppression exists here. But we cannot pretend that Brixton is the Bronx, because it just isn't. You know what I mean? We cannot pretend that Harlem is Harlem, because it isn't. You know, there's nowhere in England where you can walk to the corner store like Compton and buy an M16. And, but yet, no, but you say that we're now in a position where we have more young Afro-Caribbean men in jail than we do in college, just like America, same cycle. I always tell young people, look here like this. My mother's white, my father is black. That my, my, my white family is from Scotland. There are many, many poor parts of Scotland, as, any, as most people here know. In fact, some of the poorest neighborhoods in the UK are in Scotland. Some of the highest levels of violence are in Scotland. It's not black people, it's white people. What young white boys killing each other? If I, as a man whose mother is white, started rapping tomorrow about how fantastic it is that white people kill one another, would I get anywhere? Just, just a frank fact, it doesn't matter whether you're black or white, it's very clear there are people that own very respected companies encouraging you to kill yourself. Right? And the crazy part about it is it works so well that if I did that, young black boys would say, oh God, that's crazy. Have you heard this big tune? He's talking about killing white people. But I'm like, no, they rap about murdering black people all day, every day, like it's fashion. doesn't have to make rich people richer. We are taught to believe that unless your music makes rich people richer, you don't exist. You're not going to get played on the radio, you're not going to have some stuff put on TV. In this day and age, with YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and I know because I've had to do it. I don't know because I thought it would be a good idea to do. I know because the radio doesn't play me anymore. The TV doesn't play. I know because I have had to use these avenues and it works and you can make a living off it. It's these apathetic people that will turn to you and say, oh man, like, what's the point of talking about that stuff? You can't change anything. We should also encourage artists to realize the strength and the power that they hold within, you know, that, they, that, that essentially that if they can find a way to creatively because I think actually at the end of the day, like I'm not pointing fingers at nobody. If your song isn't making people dance, then perhaps that's why also as well. You know, because a lot of my a lot of my friends who are like very into like conscious hip hop and all this stuff, people get really caught up and say, I said this and I said that. Why and it's like, yeah, but but it's not just what you're saying, it's how you're saying, like, I got a lot of friends from the underground who are so into their flows that they have the wackest choruses and hooks that I've ever heard. <laughs> but they're saying really important material, you know? But on the other hand, a group like Public Enemy was completely innovative. Completely innovative. You never heard beats like that, and you never heard lyrics like that, and you never heard hooks like that. And of course they played that shit on the radio. How could they not? They had to. So that, at the end of the day, just bring your best, bring your A game, study, study the best of them. Don't just study hip hop, study all of this shit, mix media, every kind of music. Just put everything you have into it and know that once you've done that, it's still not enough. <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, it's on you, but you can't do it. You can do it any way you want to. You can do it in, you, can, you know, any artist signed to a label is still an independent artist. It's still independent, you know? And it's important to remember that too. Like it's important for actors to remember that their agents and managers work for them, you know? So, but, but it's like, sometimes we go into McDonald's, right? And we, we eat that food and then we say, oh man, food is dead, you know? Food is just, the state of food is just horrible. When in reality, it's not really the state of food, it's just where you're getting your food from, right? Um, and so I think when you think about artists like Kyle and Loki, it's like going to a Jamaican restaurant, you know what I mean? Getting you some oxtail and some curry chicken, I mean, that's real food, and it does exist, it's everywhere. You can go to real restaurants and get real food all over, right? Um, so I think a lot of times we just kind of go to the McDonald's on every quarter, corner, and then we kind of make a generalization about the state of food. Um, when in reality, food is alive and well, hip hop is alive and well, you just have to do a little bit more work maybe to get it. Hail Mary.
Mary, mother of God. Got the whole host of angels shuffling in my iPod. Niggas learn to raise their voices when I lowered my rod. Sapphire Moses, Sapphire knows it, so my word is my bond. To my heart with my mind, speak my nature divine. Call this shit into existence back in 79. With the future in my pocket, tightly gripped like a nine. Keep my finger on the trigger, waiting for the right time. Ancient niggas align, path of cosmic design. Blood of kings and saddles, ring, no need no diamonds to shine. Yes, the reason for the season, ornamented divine. Code the language of the message with my fist in the sky. Keep your head up, we represent the real, my nigga dead up. Book of the dead, history bled, this nigga fed up. Led us to despair, some in the prayer and they won't let up. Until they got us worshiping them, false gods instead of the realness. God of the streets, my niggas feel this. We nod our heads and worship through beats, go ahead and kneel it. The love that makes a cipher complete, and it's displayed through the way the race I marries the beat.